New York City and welcome to ERA Demo Day. I'm Sharon, the program manager here at ERA, and thank you all so much for joining us today. We are so excited for you to meet our amazing founders from the winter 2021 cohort. But first, here's our co-founder and managing partner, John. Good morning. Welcome to Demo Day. It's ERA 20, and we couldn't be more excited to welcome all of you from around New York and around the world here to meet our newest batch of 12 founders. We promise we're going to keep this short. You're here to see them, not us. But before we do, a couple quick words. First, it's been a privilege to work with all these companies the last four months. Each and every one of them is working on something big, really exciting. And we know that every investor here today is going to find at least one of them that you're as excited to write and check into today as we were when we met them a few months ago. They're all building for the world that's going to exist tomorrow. Many of them building for a world that's changed during COVID, everywhere from health tech to ed tech and everywhere in between. Each and every one of their businesses we think is accelerating, and we believe that you're gonna be even more excited when you get to spend some time with them. Now, before I turn it over to Murat, do you wanna say a couple things about some recent portfolio companies of ours, which have been having some very exciting events and announcements. Two companies have recently announced transactions expected to close this quarter for ex exits in excess of a billion dollars. First of all, Triple Lift. Congratulations to Eric Berry and the entire Triple Lift team. They recently announced a $1.4 billion acquisition to Vista, expected to close in the near future. Since they presented a demo day just like this one, well, almost like this one, in 2012, Triple Lift has grown to one of the leaders in ad tech globally. They're just getting started, and we think this next chapter is going to be more exciting. Again, congratulations. It's been a huge win for ad tech and the broader New York community as well. And secondly, Congratulations to Catapult, they were Cognical back when they presented a demo day, who recently announced a SPAC transaction for over a billion dollars expected to close this quarter. Since we first started working with them, Catapult has grown to be one of the leader in the least to own financing for e-commerce purchases. You can use them as a consumer, and pretty soon you'll be able to buy their stock as well. Again, congratulations to the entire team. We couldn't be more proud of them. It's a great win for FinTech and a great win for New York Tech as well. So. There you have it. The companies you're about to meet, we think you're going to be following in their footsteps. And which one of them? Well, you're going to have to invest and follow them to find out. Without further ado, though, let me turn it over to Marat. Again, thank you for coming. Marat, please take it away. Thank you, John. Hi, everybody. 2020 was definitely a challenging year. But 2020 was also a record year for venture capital, with $156 billion invested in startups in the U.S. So 2020 was challenging and our companies came through really very strongly. At the same time, first quarter of 2021 broke all venture capital records with $64 billion invested in startups. We are so proud to see our companies flourish and expand their operations and increase their revenue. We have a new record to announce today. ERA portfolio companies market cap has reached a stunning $5 billion, which includes one, more than $1 billion raised by ERA companies. This obviously includes our two big announcements that John mentioned, Catapult Pay and also Triple Lift, who are exiting for more than a $1 billion, which is a huge win for the New York ecosystem. We are very, very thankful to our investors, to our mentors, and to our partners for all of this. We've been working in New York City with all of you for the past 10 years, and we cannot wait for you to meet our next set of 12 amazing companies. Thank you again for joining us, and I'm sending you back to Sharon. Thanks, Rob. In a little bit, you'll meet with the 20th cohort who will soon join the 238 companies who've graduated from our program. But before that, we'd like to thank all of those who made it possible. Thank you so much to our mentors and alums for your tremendous work with the founders this winter, as well as our sponsors for your ongoing support and help to our portfolio companies and this cohort, of course. Our EIRs, lead mentors, and venture partners for working with their assigned companies on a weekly basis to ensure that they achieve their goals. And of course, our Demo Day coaches, thank you all so much for coaching the companies through this whole process. We really couldn't have done it without you. And now, I'd love to have our first lead mentor introduce the company. I'm Chris O'Brien, lead mentor for Hopscotch. 
Hopscotch is addressing one of the most important health crises in America today, uh, mental health conditions affecting children and adolescents. Children and adolescents with mental health conditions are often go undiagnosed and untreated and are generally living in areas not well served by behavioral health professionals. Hopscotch's new platform is addressing this issue by bringing synchronous and asynchronous telemedicine services and providing new revenue opportunities for pediatric and specialty practices. Please join me in welcoming Marla Beyer, CEO and co-founder of Hopscotch. Thank you. My name is Marla Beyer and I am the co-founder and CEO of Hopscotch a software platform that digitizes pediatric behavioral health care. We launched just two months ago and already have over 1,550 clinicians across the country using us. Her name was Lila, and I met her when she was coming for treatment for a severe anxiety disorder at the Children's Hospital that I was working at. Over time, I learned how her diagnosis had impacted virtually every aspect of her life, her grades, her relationships, her physical health, and her entire family's well-being. She had waited over six months for an intake appointment. Currently, up to 80% of children with a behavioral health diagnosis go without care due to nationwide provider shortages. This issue has gotten much worse with the pandemic. We've seen emergency room visits and child suicides skyrocket. Providers are burnt out and overwhelmed. This is not just a public health crisis, it's a national emergency. Currently, the care process is incredibly outdated and fragmented. Clinicians use paper-based worksheets with their patients, leading to the most important part of treatment, the follow-up work, rarely getting completed. Furthermore, the family unit, desperate for information, has little to no insight into how to best support their child. These issues lead to regression in between sessions and high rates of treatment drop-off. Our solution directly addresses these problems. For the clinicians we're working with, we've heard how Hopscotch has transformed their practices. Clinicians are able to access our library of digital content to improve interactivity in virtual sessions while also driving engagement and adherence to follow-up work. Children are able to access a separate secure area where they're able to view follow-up resources and tools to drive progress even when not in the office. For families, we empower them with guidance, progress tracking tools, and communication with their provider. We launched just two months ago and already have over 1,550 clinicians currently using our product, entirely driven through peer-to-peer -peer referral. We have yet to spend a single dollar on marketing. With just our version one product, we have over 300 clinicians using it multiple times a week and who have fully integrated it into their practice. We've heard Hopscotch saves them hours per week, We've received hundreds of content requests from clinicians, and we have clinician influencers signing up to become content leaders. As we've gained traction with independent providers, we've garnered strong interest from hospital systems and are currently in discussion with eight top hospitals who are not only interested in integrating hopscotch within behavioral health, but within primary care as well to help them meet the exploding demand for these services. Providers are not the only group interested in what we're doing. Payers are currently spending two and a half times more on claims for patients with a behavioral health diagnosis and are looking for ways to shift care from high cost settings like the emergency room to the primary care office. We've worked to identify the exact metrics that these payers need and are currently collecting those with the providers that we're working with. I've led and managed NIH-funded clinical trials in the pediatric behavioral health space. My co-founder has over 20 years of experience leading and scaling engineering teams, and our chief medical officer currently sits on the board of the American Academy of Pediatrics, where he helps to set federal pediatric healthcare standards. Our board of advisors is composed of leading researchers, clinicians, and business development executives across top hospitals and insurers. We've begun executing on our strategy with thousands of clinicians, 
but fundamentally believe that behavioral health care is far generalizable beyond the specialty. It needs to be democratized amongst proprietors and our unique approach to team-based pediatric health care widely implemented across systems. And that's where we're headed. Thank you so much for your time and I look forward to discussing Hopscotch with you more after. Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Reed, and I'm proud to introduce you to the founders of BlendEd, who are building a very important product that the world needs right now. In 2020, every university was dragged kicking and screaming into the 21st century. But colleges are frankly struggling to deliver excellent online education. Harvard now offers the world's most expensive subscription website, and their UX sucks. But how exactly do you deliver awesome online education. BlendEd solves this problem by focusing on the professors who sit on the front lines of all this change. They make it easy for professors to create excellent online classes. And without further ado, I'd like to turn it over to the co-founder and CTO of BlendEd, David Boone. Hi, I'm David Boone, the co-founder and CTO of BlendEd, the platform college instructors use to earn more, save time, and teach better. I met my co-founder Jeff when he was the founder and principal of my high school, one that President Obama cited as the future of public education. I then went to study computer science at Harvard and work in ed tech at Microsoft. At the same time, Jeff founded a platform that now over 30,000 teachers use to reach over 1 million students. We teamed up to found BlendEd because we recognize a massive opportunity in higher education. You see, today there are 1.7 million professors in the US and they are struggling to engage the modern learner because these learners expect more than a textbook and hours of lecture experience. And colleges are aware of this, but the solutions available on the market either control the professor's curriculum or replace the professor altogether. But BlendEd is here with a different approach, one that makes the professor the center and focus of saving higher education. Say hello to BlendEd, a course design platform and content marketplace that transforms how professors build, deliver, and monetize course curriculum. We do this by blending the best of online and face-to-face -face instruction into a model that allows professors to build content-rich experiences for the modern learner. And this is not just a dream, it's a reality. This summer, Lorain County Community College, a nationally recognized institution for their focus on student success, is launching BlendEd with their over 700 instructors and 11 thousand students. But this is just the beginning because our pipeline continues to expand. So let me tell you more about how the product itself works. Our course design platform automates 90% of the professor's most painful and redundant work. We do this by integrating directly with their learning management system, video conferencing software, and bookstore turning complex tasks into single click solutions. And then there's our marketplace, which connects professors with the best content from third party providers and other instructors, allowing them to monetize their best learning materials. And this is also how we built our hybrid business model. Our course design platform is a freemium product where college professors can always use it for free but departments, teams, and universities pay for a managed subscription when they want access. And then the marketplace functions by making content recommendations personalized to the professor's course as they build it in the course design platform. Once they've curated the content they want, we consolidate it into a single cart for their students to purchase. 
With this model, every time content gets sold, an author gets paid and Blended earns a percentage. And the best part is, this is not new spend. Students already spend $8 billion on traditional course materials. But with Blended, now professors have access to that spend with even better materials. So we're excited about Blended because we found a natural fit with community colleges. Their professors are focused more on the students and are interested in earning additional income. Not to mention, they're seeing a huge influx in funding at these institutions for tools like Blended. So the time for Blended has never been better. We're building a generation of education where the professor is the centerpiece of innovation and instruction and that they are rewarded for their best works. We're excited about building this future and we'd like for you to join us on this journey. Thank you. Have you ever wondered why we still don't have any autonomous cars, planes, or robots? Elon Musk has been announcing them ever since 2015. Yet the best they have is what some refer to as an autonomous drunk driver. The problem cannot be solved with today's technology or algorithms. That's why I'm very excited to introduce the next company to you. A very impressive team with a technology inspired by the human brain a team that will create the future of AI and drive autonomous automation. Please welcome Neurobotics. Hi, my name is Diana and I'm the CEO and founder of Neurobotics. And together we are driving the autonomous future. I'm sure many of you have at some point in your lives been stuck in a traffic jam. It is really, really frustrating, isn't it? It is equally frustrating for us AI researchers to have to deal with the traffic jam of data on the cloud. There is way too much data on the cloud. By 2025, we will have 175 trillion gigabytes of data on the cloud. Meanwhile, we are spending over $600 billion trying to make sense of that data. And as you very well know, we have exactly zero level five autonomous cars, planes, drones, and mobile robots. So we in Neurobotics decided to change that. We are building what we like to call the highways of AI. We are using edge computing to do this. Now, edge computing asks a very simple and elegant question. How do you take a piece of data from point A to point B in the fastest way possible? To answer this question, we took insight from the world's most powerful computer, your brain. Our technology is called neuromorphic computing, and we are starting with intelligent perception. We have built what we like to call the world's first neuromorphic AI platform. We have done this in a partnership with Intel. They will release their neuromorphic chip in two years from now. Together with Mercedes and BMW, we are one of the very few partners that get to test this before it is officially released on the market. We are also working with the Sony neuromorphic camera companies. They have a pool of over 500 clients that specifically requested a neuromorphic AI platform. So this is what we built, and this is how it works. As you can see here, we are able to only detect the relevant pixels out of every frame. This drives down the costs by up to 90%, and most importantly, it allows for advanced analytics that pave the way towards full autonomous robotics. And this is an example of what we can do. This drone is flying in a GPS and internet denied area, and it just dodged a basketball at microsecond resolution. This might not seem much for drones, but for large UAVs, it means they can dodge a bullet or a missile. For this reason, I'm very happy to say that our first POC is starting at $1 million in a 150K retainer. In the past month alone, we have had four more similar offers, and we are not stopping at defense. We are also working with the large construction and manufacturing corporations, as well as, of course, the large automotive and aerospace corporations as well. We believe that neuromorphic computing is going to drive the future of machine learning. Right now, machine learning is starting to stagnate at 7% KGR. Neuromorphic vision is growing at 87% KGR. This is hot for any market, especially ours. 
So not only do we expect that neomorphic vision will take over the existing machine vision market, but expand into a much larger new market, that of training autonomous robots. So why do we think that we can pave the way towards full autonomy in AI and robotics? Well, it's because of our team. My name is Diana, I am the CEO and founder. I have over 10 years experience in building the most advanced imaging systems in the world. I have a PhD and two postdocs in neuroscience, and of course a tattoo to prove it, in case I forget. Uh, one of my postdocs was in the lab of the two Nobel laureates that discovered navigation in the brain. This is the inspiration behind robotics. Randall, our product lead, has raised over $150 million in startup funding from funds like Founders Fund and Elon Musk. He has 15 years experience in building these neomorphic algorithms and an assistant professorship at Boston University. Our sales and marketing talent comes from IBM and our extended backend talent comes from the Human Brain Project and ETH Zurich. They're offering us resources worth over $2 billion just so that we can bring this technology to market. At this point, we could try to deliver this technology to every single corporation that wants to buy it. It will take us about three years for each. Or we can raise, which we might, and try to get the right front end and QA talent so that we can modularize and productize as opposed to over customizing. In this way, we can deliver one module to about five corporations at once, retain our product, and catch the huge growth of the neuromorphic technology. If you two are excited about the future of AI and robotics, and if you would like to meet with a truly stellar team, then I would be happy to meet you. Thank you very much for your time. Hi, my name is Art Micklin, and I'm the lead mentor for Magpie. Catherine Harrison is the founder and CEO of Magpie. After leading the IBM blockchain product team, she had an epiphany that the next most valuable but untapped asset class might just be hiding in your attic or in your closet. So she decided to launch Magpie to solve the problem of optimizing the value of luxury goods and collectibles. Please meet Catherine, founder of Magpie. Hi, my name is Catherine Harrison and I'm the founder and CEO of Magpie. Since the pandemic, collectibles and luxury goods, like sneakers, have emerged as a huge yet accessible asset class. And it's not just sneakers. An early edition Gatsby went for 160K. Super Mario Brothers from the 80s, 217K. And a first edition box of Pokemon cards went for $415,000. This market is huge, 400 billion in the US, but it's never been managed like a true asset class. Transaction volume and liquidity are low, and market data is hidden in super fan communities and resale marketplaces. Despite those challenges, this market is on fire. I saw this market shift underway while I was running product at IBM Blockchain. On one hand, you have marketplaces like The Real Real to buy and sell luxury goods for real world use. On the other hand, you have Robinhood to buy and sell stocks digitally. But investors and collectibles are drawn to the space for a range of reasons. Enter Magpie. Magpie captures the white space in investables collecting. By onboarding physical goods into the digital world, Magpie makes it possible for the first time in history to truly manage collectibles as a real asset class. Starting with sneakers and handbags, Magpie makes it simple, no matter a collector's objectives, if they want to actively enjoy their objects or actively trade them. By creating digital assets for each product, Magpie has transformed ownership management. We make it simple to protect, connect, and value your collections. And people are lining up to join us. We have over a thousand people on the wait list, including Gen Z tastemakers from the world's most influential brands. And the wait list is being driven by Henry's, the high earner, not rich yet set. They live at the crossroads of the digital and the physical worlds, and they are looking to actively maximize and diversify their investments. Magpie makes this simple. We live in the digital communities like Discord, Reddit, and Instagram, 
where tastemaker Henry's thrive. We can bring collectors and their collections onto Magpie directly from the resale marketplaces where they're already buying and selling goods. With a few simple photographs, we can make a personal vault of all of their collectibles and provide object level history and provenance information. Once the vault is live, we then make it simple to manage as a true portfolio of assets with everything from pricing recommendations to service advisories to data on demand across different marketplaces. And most collections include beautiful, rare, and special objects that people love to display. Magpie's digital trophy case automates display for friends, family, and fans, making it easy to share your collection broadly. And this drives a customer acquisition flywheel for us. As more people join the platform with their collections, they get more value, and then they bring their entire communities to our platform. We make money in two ways. First, through freemium subscription model with users and brands, and second, through partners, which provide value-added services to our collectors. In fact, today we're thrilled to announce our first two partners, Wax Insurance, and free will estate planning. This will make it simple for our collectors to protect their collections and their legacy. My team has tremendous experience at organizations ranging from Morgan Stanley to AWS to Louis Vuitton. We're all collectors and uniquely motivated to solve this problem and build this market. The market for consumer collectibles is here. It's hot and it's happening. Don't miss out. Join us in building the platform to unlock this market. Join us in building Magpie. Thank you. Hi, I'm David Levy. I've been an ERA mentor for the last 10 years, and I was delighted to be paired up with Kwong during this cohort. Kwong has spent the last two decades as a software engineer in financial services, and now he's built an AI platform that can help homeowners proactively modify their home mortgages and other debt so they don't foreclose on their homes. This saves tons of money for the banks, for the homeowners, and most importantly, it keeps people in their homes. Please welcome Kwong from Carify. Hello, everyone. I present to you Carify, software for lenders to improve profitability and prevent foreclosures. Foreclosures are bad for borrowers who lose their homes and their greatest assets, and for lenders who lose $50,000 on average per foreclosure. In 2019, half a million borrowers were evicted, and COVID has made the situation worse. Two million homeowners will instantly face foreclosure once the forbearance program expires. Carify software identifies and drives actions to inject liquidity to borrowers early in the cycle, helping lenders engage and counsel homeowners before it's too late and avoid $50,000 in foreclosure expenses. Industry research highlight and emphasize the importance of borrower liquidity, where reducing payments by 10% can reduce default rates by 22%. Carefy's solution guides mortgage lenders to look across household expenses to reduce payments, and that changes the equation completely. Instead of just $1,200 of monthly mortgage payments, we now have access to $4,500 across household expenses to hunt for that 10% reduction. Our grand vision is to reimagine the 11 trillion mortgage market and we begin with the 120 billion distress segment and with the person whom the homeowner already calls for help, the servicer. Over the past six months, We've signed on three funds as customers and grown to $120,000 in ARR. With Carify, our clients have improved foreclosure prevention by 25% across their portfolios, and they have saved one person from foreclosure every day. In some cases, we've modified mortgages to enable borrowers uh, access to small business loans, and in others, we've done the opposite where we've replaced a high APR credit cards with low-rate personal loans that enabled creditor-friendly mortgage modifications. We've also helped retired elders 
to downsize and cash out. Carefy modernizes personal finance counseling by connecting homeowners, mortgage servicers, mortgage lenders, and non-mortgage providers. In this example, we see a high Carefy score, alerts to the servicer that the borrower benefits from debt consolidation, and upon borrower opt-in, the servicer presents personal loan quotes directly to the homeowner at the start of the cycle in the first meeting. On the back end, we pay off the credit cards directly with the personal loan without it passing through the hands of the borrower, improving approval rates. Other non-mortgage expenses include small business loans and insurance rate comparison. We scale with algorithms to codify matching and our approach provides wins for everyone involved with three revenue channels. We'll continue to focus on the distressed debt funds and add thousands more loans over the next few months with customers in our pipeline. As we look forward, we plan to expand upstream across the lending workflow. We start talking to larger lenders where combining our liquidity injection with predictive models that can early detect up to 60 days before the first missed payment, we can help prevent distress before it occurs with enhanced options that include mortgage refinance. We've also learned that there's appetite for a direct-to-consumer version of our liquidity injection, such as during mortgage originations to finance home improvement and for renters. Our team has 100 years of consumer lending experience at banks, services, rating agencies, and hedge funds. My background includes 20 years of software development, business development, and risk management experience at some of the largest financial institutions in the world, my most recent five at Goldman Sachs. We're looking to speak to investors who understand our space and bring experience, knowledge, and contacts to help grow our business. Thank you for your time, and please do not hesitate to reach out to hello at carrotfy.com to connect. Hi, I'm Brian Heck, venture partner here at ERA. Nowadays, the most successful consumer products are no longer just products. Peloton isn't a bike, it's a fitness lifestyle. 30 Madison, an ERA company, started with Keeps for hair loss. Now they have products for allergies, acid reflux, migraines, and it's all within a remote care support system that attracts loyal customers for life. You're about to see another company that's starting with a remarkable product, but this is not just another D2C upstart. It's the entry point into a huge market that hasn't seen true innovation in years. Here to tell you about it is Eliana from GetMister. Hi everyone, I'm Eliana and I am the CEO of GetMister. In 2018, my father was diagnosed with skin cancer. Thankfully, he survived but he is just one of the 30 million men who have a history of skin cancer. This is unacceptable because we know the most effective way to prevent the majority of skin cancers. It's what every dermatologist tells you. It's what your mother has always told you. Wear sunscreen. But when my mother, a dermatologist and skin cancer surgeon, has asked her male patients over the years to wear sunscreen, she always hears the same thing. It's so greasy, it'll show up white in my beard. I don't want to smell like Banana Boat. So we join forces. With my background in product marketing and venture capital and her 30 years of industry expertise, we are a perfect pair to launch Get Mister, a company that is transforming what it means for men to have healthy skin for life. We aren't just marketing products to men, we are developing proprietary formulations that are actually made for men's skin. And our first product is the Daily, an FDA registered three-in-one moisturizer aftershave with of course, safe, mineral, broad spectrum protection that thousands of men are already using in a market that is booming. Men are spending $10 billion annually in the grooming market and skincare is the fastest growing segment. Since launch, we've generated over $70,000 in gross revenue. And now more than 2,000 men are using the daily every single day. In addition to one-time purchases, we are tapping into a much higher lifetime value by offering subscription. And in the last two months, we've doubled our number of subscribers. Of course, we're appealing to men who are looking for a sunscreen to prevent skin cancer but we're also appealing to a much broader audience of men, those with other skin health concerns like wrinkles, brown spots, and rosacea. So 
Let's hear from some of them. Hey, my name is Dave. My name is Abrar. Hi, my name is Joe. My name is Eric, and I've been using the daily every damn day for two months. Three months more. Three months. Like I wanted something that I could wear on a daily basis. Because my dad died of skin cancer. I was getting not just better skincare protection. And it's been incredible. Nothing worked for me until I started using the daily. It gives me a lot of confidence. Because I knew it was safe. Like I'm getting the protection that my mother would be proud of. With reactions like those, it is no surprise that Katie Couric has called us the perfect all-in-one gift, and Forbes deems us an essential in men's morning routine. We are selling into two key channels, direct-to-consumer and through dermatology practices. We are leveraging relationships with key influencers such as athletes who are hyper-aware of the impacts of sun damage. I'm excited to share that this month, we have signed agreements with Hall of Fame tennis pro Brad Gilbert and YouTube CrossFit personalities, the Buttery Bros, to help bring awareness of Get Mister nationwide. We are also scaling in our dermatology channel. Dermatologist recommendations hold particular weight at the point of sale. Using Dr. Goldstein's industry relationships and our prize-winning research, we have grown from one practice to over 50 providers who are recommending, selling, and love the daily. I am excited to say that this month, we've also secured a partnership with the largest multi-site practice of dermatologists across California, Nevada, and Arizona. This is a channel that few other direct-to-consumer competitors will be able to replicate. But the daily is just the beginning. With online guidance, personalized products, and remote skin health diagnostics, we are transforming the skin health market for men. So that men like my father, or perhaps you, or one of your friends or family members can all receive the skincare that they deserve. Join us in enhancing habits to save lives. Thank you. All of my life, I've been an early adopter of technology. So since the early 2000s, I've been on LinkedIn and I've always thought it had huge potential to change the way we interact with people. We all know how prominent it has become today. But frankly, if I'm honest, it still does not help me establish meaningful professional connections. And that's why I'm so happy to introduce Revmo. Don't be mistaken, it is not your next LinkedIn but it is the future of intelligent network mapping and connections. Please welcome Freddie, co-founder of Revmo. Hello, I'm Freddie DeCibea, co-founder and CEO of Revmo. Revmo was born when my last employer, a top-tier investment bank, missed a nearly $300 million opportunity. After months of hard work, years of relationship building, we lost a huge deal. Hours after the announcement flashed, a bomb drops. Why did nobody call me? I know Sue really well. We sit on the board of UCLA's hospital together. Could have helped here. This is a massive problem, endemic to the professional services sector. Companies could win so much more often if they just capitalized on their relationships. But where to look? That's why we built Revmo. Revmo is a secure, private, data agnostic relationship platform. We have just completed our MVP and are now in closed beta with five enterprises with signed LOIs for more than 100 customers each. Our team has the right ingredients to succeed where others have tried and failed. I created and led a team of data scientists at Goldman Sachs for their investment banking sales force, where we solved these problems. We cracked the code. My co-founder, Ben, has worked at Google, Goldman Sachs, and has founded startups in data privacy, information security, and data anonymization. Our approach is fundamentally different. Other platforms look at your network in the silos of subscribers to their platform 
and treat them as a flat directory of who you know. Redmoog disagrees with this proposition. The world is not flat, and everyone is not equally connected. We weight our connections using a proprietary, patent-pending combination of observable metrics. We protect and preserve privacy and anonymity, breaking down the barrier that other companies face, getting users who matter to contribute their connections. We also gather implicit, scraped, and observed data to augment user-contributed data, surfacing a much fuller picture of a user's breadth of connections. Revmo makes it easy to search your extended network, surface the best contextualized paths to the people you need to meet, and request an introduction to them. This is no science project. It works in practice. With the users we've had, the feedback has been overwhelmingly positive. One pilot user in the fundraising space closed their sales leads 50 times faster than their, than their cold callouts. We see use our users get it, and we see Revmo spreading through our users' networks, with one new sign-up for every five introductions made or received. From our initial go-to-market use case with wealth managers and B2B SaaS sales, we will expand into fundraising and then into recruiting and beyond. Development for Revmo began in September of 2020, and since then, we have launched our MVP, successfully conducted a closed beta, and we are thrilled to announce that today, that beta becomes an open beta. So let us show you the power of your network, today with Revmo. Hi, I'm Phil Natchez, lead mentor for a turnout and ERA venture partner. What a year this has been, not just from the pandemic, but in social justice. Leading companies and organizations are starting to make serious commitments to diversity, equity, and inclusion. And these are driven by the top of the house, by the boards and senior management. These folks want tools to monitor and measure the effectiveness of the investments they're making. Enter Turnout with their system to facilitate, monitor, and measure interactions within groups and subgroups uh, of uh, an organization. To tell us about it, here's Tom. Hello everyone, I'm Tom, the founder and CEO of Turnout. Now before we get into it, I've got to tell you about Xerox being a major innovator in a way that you would have never expected. Yes, that Xerox. Xerox was the first company to invest in building its internal employee communities, starting with the first ever dedicated for its black employees as a way to better engage and retain their team. Turns out this started a movement and it became what are today's diversity and inclusion programs which have massive budgets at every major company to support internal communities just like these. And think about today, with a changing social climate and the rise of distributed teams, this idea of community and connection is more important than it's ever been. The problem is, these diversity and inclusion teams need to show measurable impact, but they're stuck juggling dozens of disparate tools with broken workflows and incomplete data. That's why we started Turnout. Turnout is how enterprise companies build, measure, and grow their internal communities. Since launching, we're already seeing real results. We helped Cruise, our first enterprise customer, grow their community engagement by 40% after their first month using Turnout. That's 40% growth in one month. Those are Tesla stock numbers we're talking about here. Those are the types of numbers that companies want to see when they're spending $8 billion every year on these programs. And I'll show you how we get them there. Building a community means hosting events on Zoom, having discussions in Slack, 
sending newsletters via MailChimp, would turn out this all happens in one place. We unify these tools to create the best user experience. Meanwhile, the magic is happening behind the scenes. Having these integrations unlocks essential data around employee behavior that we use to generate actionable insights. Our customers today are for the first time seeing real-time insights of their employee engagement. And we wanted to take it one step further. We launched our recommendation engine that uses turnout data to connect teams to a marketplace of relevant and curated event content that we know will drive even further engagement. To do this, we partnered with dozens of industry leading speakers, workshop hosts, and event facilitators that community leaders can book through the tool that they already use every day. To get access to everything that Turnit has to offer, our pricing is simple with an average annual contract size of $15,000 and several six figure deals already in our pipeline. And this is an all star team. We founded a previously successful startup that we sold in 2018 and we're back to take on this even bigger opportunity. And the timing couldn't be better. Top CEOs have marked 2020 as a catalyst for long-term investment in diversity and inclusion programs, and everyone is looking for a way to feel more connected. It's time to focus on bringing people together, and we'll do that by building better communities. Come talk to us. We'd love to have you a part of this mission. Hi, my name is Simone Tarantino, lead mentor for Autonomy. We all know PNC and direct insurance, a $700 billion industry in 2020, it's very complicated, both at retail and business level. To add to that is an industry that still processes most of the claims manually with enormous cost and dysfunction. I'd like to present Jan, CEO and founder of Autonomy. With an incredible team of experts, they create a proprietary end-to-end -end claim automation platform merging blockchain and artificial intelligence that simplify workflows and greatly reduce costs for insurance carriers. Look familiar? That's right. This is the Suez Canal. In the aftermath of the debacle, analysts estimate losses in the tune of $10 billion. $10 billion. Now guess how much the insurance companies are going to be covering? Less than 1%. 1% of those losses. Don't be mistaken, this is not isolated to the Suez Canal. Every day, thousands of time-sensitive cargoes are actually shipped in air without being insured for delays or interruption. So now think about it. COVID vaccine, perishables, livestock, they all suffer either spoilage or high mortality rates while being transported. Every year, 62 million metric tons of cargo are suffering insufficient insurance coverage for three reasons. Opacity in insurance policies, which largely exclude delays, excruciating pain in submitting claims, and excessive admin costs for both the shippers and the insurers. And this is why we created Autonomy. We are transforming the cargo insurance process into a fast, cost-efficient, and transparent experience for both the insurers and the policyholders. Hi, I'm Jan, CEO and co-founder, and this is what we do. Autonomy is the first ever parametric insurance platform that supercharges insurance operations with three proprietary technologies. Data activated API triggers, such as cargo delays, claims automation thanks to blockchain smart contract, and full integration of digital wallets and digital payments, which are state-of-the-art fintech solutions. In the case of air cargo delay, your legacy insurance is taking you for a ride. With dozens of emails, phone calls, and manual steps, the entire process takes months and is extremely cost ineffective. Now with Autonomy, we streamline the whole process in three simple steps. Event detection, claims activation, and digital payments. And the best part is, we do it under an hour for a fraction of the cost. Our product is already running in beta with the top tier affiliate insurance administrator, 
We processed a thousand policies and already demonstrated that our model is outperforming the benchmark by 25%. We continue working with this client and project to roll out 15,000 policies by the end of the year. Our go-to-market strategy is focused on two channels, cargo insurance brokerage, who are very excited about the tech that fix immediate pain points, and third-party agent who love the speed and simplicity of autonomy that frees up dozens of hours every month and help that focus on more complex matters. Autonomy is a global opportunity and a game changer for the industry. Starting with air transport, our grand vision is to bring automation at scale to a variety of sectors in air, marine, trucking, weather, and device coverage using the same parametric technology. This market is bound to go off to nearly $50 billion in size in the next five years. In the next 24 months, we project to roll out our product to various areas in the cargo industry, growing rapidly and dominating the parametric insurance space. We have a great team. I'm an 18-year Wall Street veteran with experience in risk management, digital assets, and insurance PNC underwriting candidates. Our CTO, Jeremy, is a full-stack engineer with 12 years in security, web, and blockchain. And our CEO, Sebastian, is the vice chairman of the Mobility Open Blockchain Initiative. Together with a very talented team of advisors, we have special abilities in executing that very ambitious project. Now, if like me, you are very excited in disrupting insurance, do hit me up and let's partner together in order to propel the sector to a next level. Thanks a lot. Hi, I'm Brian Hecht, venture partner here at ERA. Now, when I was much younger and went shopping, usually at the mall, all I cared about was what was on sale or what looked cool or what celebrities were wearing. I would never think about things like whether they were good for the environment or paid their workers fairly or whether it was produced locally. But now I scroll through Facebook and Instagram and everywhere I see new brands and all they talk about are their values, sustainable materials, ethical practices, black owned businesses. These are the things that are important to modern consumers. They're spending billions to buy and brands are spending billions to market these products. Our next company has found an ingenious way to tap into a whole new sector of the economy. Here to tell you about it is Jacqueline from The Vertical. Hi, I'm Jacqueline Grauman, co-founder and CEO of The Vertical. I'm also a millennial shopper. When I shop, here's what I think about. Where did this product come from? Is it sustainable? What's the founder story? Are there female founders? I do shop on Amazon for commodities, but those aren't the purchases I get excited about. What excites me is that feeling I get when I buy something I love and can feel really good about. And I'm willing to change where I buy and what I buy to get it. I am not alone. Nine in 10 millennials would switch brands to one that aligns with their values. So now there's this new generation of digitally native direct to consumer brands over a hundred thousand of them. They're all trying to jump on this bandwagon and lead with their values. And the demand is clearly there because this sector of direct to consumer brands is growing three times faster than e-commerce itself. But with so many new brands, the market is riddled with similar messaging, copycats and greenwashing. It's ridiculous that there's no one site to make sense of this for consumers and capture this entire sector of values-driven commerce. This is why we launched the Vertical. We are an e-commerce marketplace that connects consumers with the new generation of digitally native brands that align with the values they care about most. We curate our shopping experience around values that people really care about, that fall within our sustainability, ethics, equality, and health categories. We call these our Vertical values and we have a methodical 10-step process to qualify brands. Our values-driven philosophy touches every point of our business, from the brands we carry, to how we reach our customers, to the way that we talk to them. 
Our customers aren't just coming to us to shop for values. They also shop for style. We understand that our customers need to love our products, and they do. Our products are fashionable and accessible. With our average price point of $80, our sales are coming from across the country, from all income levels, age groups, and demographics. In a few short months, we have already shipped to 32 states. Today, our marketplace is live with 60 Vertical verified brands like Bloom, Etitude, Caraway, and a waitlist of over 400 more. Our sales are growing an average of 50% month over month. Our customers are buying 2.2 products per order with an average order value of $120. And the media has taken notice with coverage from Forbes, Glossy, Modern Retail, and Morning Brew. Our strategy is working because consumers are four times more likely to refer their friends and family when buying from a values-driven company. That means lower CAC, better conversion rates, and better lifetime value. Our marketing focuses less on paid advertising and more on organic and earned media by leaning into community, content, and the connection that we make with our customers. We are partnering with micro-influencers, industry tastemakers, and up-and-coming designers who are cross-promoting the vertical and will create exclusive capsule collections. We know how to do this because we've done it before. I come from strategic brand marketing, having built my career specifically around earned media and PR in the fashion retail industry. My co-founder, Michelle, is our COO and an expert in high-growth consumer startups coming from companies like ClassPass and Sakara Life. We're tapping into this unmet customer demand and driving the future of purposeful, values-driven commerce. Join us in allowing people to finally shop what they stand for. world needs abundant, healthy foods. Agriculture is the one business that touches every human being every day, and the goalpost has moved from providing basic sustenance to healthy nourishment for all. We believe cultivating what happens under the surface is the next frontier. It is my honor to present SenseGrass, the soil intelligence platform. Hello. I'm wondering if anyone knows here who is this gentleman is. He's my grandfather. He used to be a farmer, but sadly he lost his last farm because of the soil toxicity and the high carbon emission. Eventually leads to the financial loss. And this is me, third generation farmer. I have developed SenseGraph, a patented solution to manage the nutrition and carbon emission value of food production. To make sure what happened to my father, grandfather does not repeat to any farmer in this 21st century. I'm co-founder and CEO of SenseGrass, we are soil intelligence platform. According to the United Nations, around 65% of excessive fertilizer remain unused in our food production. That leads to the food toxicity for the food we consume every day, the high unused fertilizer value, and most important, the financial loss to these enterprises, around 7 billion USD only in the US market per year. And why this is a problem? because being a large and the oldest industry, it still depend on the manual basis, where everything, the processing, testing, happen through the manual way, leads to be a lot of error. And to solve this problem, SenseGrass bring the soil intelligence platform through a first of kind AI agronomic SaaS platform. Our SaaS compute hundreds of data points from our own proprietary data layers coming from the sensor and machine data, the satellite imagery data, the ma manual health card data and the environmental data coming from our channel partner. We compute all these information and give you a highly actionable insights for the better decision making. Our operating system is developed to help these agricultural companies to manage the quality of their crop and soil, to reduce their input cost by 30% and improve their profitability by 3x. Our demo looks like this. It uses a lot of data information. All these come from our proprietary sources. And whenever something changes in the field, it gives the warning to these enterprises for the better decision making. Let's say where they have to use the fertilizer, what quantity, what quantity. 
we are serving one of the largest market. We fall in the Tesla model, we are selling directly to these enterprises into the food production as a consumer or as a channel partner with the high specialty crop in the US market. Then eventually we will expand to the other market with the different kind of crop. We are an enterprise B2B company. Our subscription is highly customized according to the requirement and the type of crop they want. It's a fit for a small enterprises or individual farmer to a large enterprises as well. We are just a year old company, but you have seen a great traction and the validation from some of the notable clients that's also using our product. We have seen early traction and we have four POC committed worth 2 million US dollars. We have some companies are also discussing for the potential POCs like Corteva, Chingenta, John Deere in the future. We are a third generation farmers, that's why we're doing this. Over 60 years of experience, we have seen this industry very closely. We have some support of some great mentors and advisors who are helping us to build this product and to connect these companies. One of the most recognized startup and awarded by some of the notable clients. We have made some significant partnership to make sure we are going in the right direction. We are here to raise our seed fund. And this seed round is going to help us money out of the money. And at the end of this round, we are going to achieve three important KPIs. We enhance product version 2.2, some key hirings, and we convert these POCs and LOI into the proper sales to get a high AR growth. That's all. If you want to join this food revolution, please contact us. Thank you. Hi, I'm Perry Solomon, lead mentor of Barista Valet. Being an entrepreneur is hard work. A lot of early mornings and a lot of late nights. Our next founder, David Leong, has a really great reason for getting up so early, making you the perfect cup of coffee and bringing it right to your door. I'm pleased to introduce to you David Leong, founder of Barista Valet. Hi everyone, I'm David. Before Barista Valet, I was the CEO of Orange Coffee where we served millions of cups of coffee every year to New Yorkers. I'm also a licensed Arabica Q grader, which is like a coffee sommelier. I'm here to tell you that delivery is the future of coffee. Why? Instead of traveling to a destination like Starbucks, people want to experience barista prepared coffee in the comfort and safety of their homes and offices without the effort and without the delivery fees. 150 million Americans drink coffee every day, so it's a huge market. And this movement has only accelerated because of COVID. And we think it's here to stay. We think we can build a new infrastructure that makes it cost effective and provides a great customer experience that wasn't possible before. But there are three main problems that need to be solved. First, poor customer experience from deliveries being made with leaky disposable cups, which lead to a messy, lukewarm drop-off and even more solid waste. Secondly, the slow logistics due to sending gig workers to busy coffee shops during peak hours, which inevitably lead to slower deliveries. And thirdly, the high fees that are sometimes triple the cost of the beverage because of the inefficiencies of how it's done now. That's why I left Orange to start Barista Valley. We're reimagining the operations and technology needed from the ground up to solve these problems and unlock this opportunity. The solution we've come up with is pretty great. It takes something old and it makes it new again. It's the milkman, but this time he's bringing coffee. Just think of Barista Valley as the modern milkman for coffee. We're building a new end-to-end -end e commerce platform that powers seamless cafe ordering online with a reliable back-end infrastructure consisting of ghost cafes for production, milkman-style logistics, and delivery site coordination. Here's how it works. We start with a barista-prepared beverage that is transported using a reusable, spill-proof thermos which holds the temperature perfectly and is more sustainable. We then offer contact-free delivery to customers' doorsteps or desks first thing in the morning when they wake up or arrive for ultimate convenience and zero lag. Best of all, our platform makes it all possible without fees. Right about now, you're probably thinking, doesn't Starbucks already own this space? No, 
Let me explain to you how we're different. Again, we think the best place to enjoy cafe quality beverage is not at the cafe, but in homes and offices. That's something DoorDash has proven with food and other companies in different areas. Just like those other companies, it requires a massive logistical infrastructure, and that's not what Starbucks does. Because their investments in retail stores, they are more interested in preserving the status quo, which is where you go to them. Most importantly, traction-wise, for us, it's working. Buildings and customers want us. Since launching at the end of March, we've signed several high-end buildings to pilots in the tri-state area with over 3,000 units and several thousand more in the pipeline. We scale as fast as we can by adding buildings. Buildings love to retain tenants with sticky amenities like ours. 62% of tenants surveyed said that Burst of LA positively influences their renewal decision. And customers love the ease of waking up to great coffee with over 99% of them saying, lifestyles are better because of ours, because of us. And our economics are extremely compelling with, we're seeing 80% gross margins, daily ordering frequency and cost of production and delivery are already coming down due to economies of scale. And we're just getting started. Once we build customer trust with great coffee, sky's the limit to expand to adjacent verticals. For example, by adding pastry, we can double our average order value and customers are already asking for it. I invite you to help make the world a better place by delivering joy with the modern milkman of coffee. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us today to hear about the achievements of our incredible entrepreneurs. We are proud investors in all of them. And if you're interested in learning more, you can book a meeting with them right now at eranyc.com forward slash demo day. Thanks again for supporting our founders today. As always, we're looking for great entrepreneurs for our summer 2021 program. So if you know anyone we should be talking to, please send them our way. We hope to see you all in person soon.